Across Haiti's capital city, a landscape of despair, one that extends far beyond Port-au-Prince. We're on our way to Lakai, the area that was devastated by the recent earthquake here. We're going to board a plane operated by the World Food Program. They're doing food and cash distributions. This is it. We flew with Pierre Honorat, the organization's country director in Haiti. When we arrived, we drove towards a remote commune called Akin, an area that faced extreme poverty even before the quake due to a lack of jobs in the area. Here you have the most vulnerable among very vulnerable people. And you need to properly identify who they are. They might be starving, literally. Exactly. This is one of their food distribution sites. Pierre's leading us into it right now. We met several women waiting in line, including the single mom of four kids. Can you tell me what life is like here? This is not a great place. Do you know anybody who's left, anybody who's leaving Haiti? Yes, there are a lot of people leaving. Hunger isn't the only life-threatening reality for Haitians. Some areas are really like war zone. You don't go there anymore. It's a so war zone. It's really a war zone. We flew back to Port-au-Prince on a UN chopper, now used to avoid violence in addition to delivering aid. On the city's streets, you understand why. We're making our way through Port-au-Prince, and much of the city right now is controlled by violent gangs. We're heading to a clinic run by Doctors Without Borders. They say they're seeing an uptick in violence. Could you trauma? It's trauma hospital. Oh, yeah. trauma Half of the yeah, patients who arrive here have life-threatening gunshot wounds, often from high-power firearms. The patient that's in this bed inside this room right now is a victim of gun violence. Haitian trauma surgeon Xavier Garnizan tends to the neediest patients. How many of the people that you meet as patients do you think would consider leaving Haiti for another country, including the United States? Maybe 90 percent. 90 percent? Why so high? Violence, poverty. And those are the patients you treat every day? Yeah. Victims of gun violence? Yeah. Stabbings? What? Car accidents because uh, they have to move from one place to another due yeah. to violence in their community? Mm -hmm. And even you as a doctor, is it fair to say that you might think about one day leaving Haiti because of the situation here? Yes, I do, uh, because at the end, I got dreams too. I, I want a better life too. I don't need to be rich, I don't need that. But I need to, to have enough to feed my family. There's enormous pressure for you as well. Yeah. He has dreams too. That doctor is a hero. And as he continues his work, the U.S. says the number of Haitians, our Coast Guard has stopped trying to leave the country by boat, has tripled just over this last year, hundreds in the last week alone. It's a situation the Biden administration says it's committed to addressing through what they say are Haitian-led solutions, not necessarily led by the international community. Haitian-led solutions? Yeah, what does that what mean? Is, what is that? That's a good question. And Haitians there, when you talk to them, they'll always tell you that they want to stay, mm. but they don't see any Haitian-led solutions that will allow them to do that. And that is the big vexing challenge for the international and I think and a lot when you're in crisis yeah. too yeah and right. I think a lot of people see people at the border and don't know the reason that they're standing there right. until like something like this that's that right so really this is where they're coming from and this yeah. is why they're coming yeah. desperation yeah all right thank thanks you, Jake thank you guys Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.